my name is Lisa, and in honor of this weekend's taste, upcoming Taste the Danforth, we're going to make spinach pie, otherwise known as spanakopita. So to start, we've already got the oven heating up at 350 degrees. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add about one, uh, one medium-sized chopped onion into this bowl here. Then we're going to cover the onion in uh, olive oil. And from there, we place the bowl into the microwave and uh, heat this up for about one minute until the onion becomes soft. Take out the, uh, the olive oil and the onions. And from there, we're going to add uh, the next set of ingredients, which we're going to add approximately 500 grams of ricotta. Then we're going to add about 500 grams of uh, feta. Then we are going to add uh, two large eggs, just uh, you can crack them right into the bowl here, just like that. Okay, so now we're going to mix up the olive oil, the onions, the feta, ricotta, and eggs. And uh, once this is all mixed up, we're going to add the spinach. And uh, working the taste that I've worked on the Danforth for a number of years and uh, have also partaken in and worked at the, uh, the Taste of the Danforth. And Spanish Capita has become one of my favorite dishes among many other Greek dishes. But this one is great because it's uh, quick and easy to make, um, delicious, and you can even, uh, with the leftovers, you can keep them in the fridge for, for up to, I guess, two to three days. We're going to add about 500 grams of uh, cooked chopped spinach. Uh, you can either use fresh spinach or uh, frozen. If you're going to use frozen, make sure that you drain it before you, you add it into the mix. Okay, so once you've mixed in all the uh, spinach with the rest of the ingredients, you add a few uh, fresh herbs and spices. So I've already added some of those things, and that's about a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and then one of my favorite additions, if you can get it, is some fresh dill. It just adds a lot of flavor and is one of the best parts of the of the dish if you've got it on hand. So some people find phyllo pastry a little bit intimidating, but I learned a great trick from my mom when I was younger, and that is once you've got the phyllo pastry out of the fridge or freezer, lay it out and put a damp towel on top, and that keeps it moist and easier to work with. Well, now we are going to uh, start with the phyllo pastry here, and pretty much it's about four four layers on the bottom and four layers on the top. So just a little bit of patience with the phyllo and. Uh, just lie one, one layer here in the bottom. It will still be a little bit tricky to work with, but uh, so as long as you take your time, it'll, it'll work out. And then what we do is we, in between each layer of phyllo pastry, we put some, brush some melted butter. Approximately half a cup of melted butter is all you need for the entire, the entire dish. Okay, so we're gonna add the last li layer of phyllo to the bottom. And once we've done that, just make sure you cover up the phyllo for the top, just so it stays uh, moist. Then don't put any butter on the last layer, and we're gonna add all of the ingredients right into this pan here. And just sort of spread it out evenly, make sure we've got every corner covered. There we go. And once you've got all of this spread out in here, it's time for the, the remaining top layers. So now that we've got all of the ingredients in the pan, we'll do the final, final bit of phyllo pastry here. And sometimes, the longer it sits, it still does get a little, little finicky. See these pieces of, uh, of split here, but no worries. These can still, still usable, still ready to go. So we'll add some butter again to this layer here, and then we'll just do three or four layers of phyllo, and we'll be done. So now we're, we've completed the spanakopita. We've added all our phyllo and the last bit of butter to cover the top. And uh, now we put it into our oven, which is preheated at 350 degrees. And we'll put it in here for about 45 minutes. And uh, sometimes it might take a few more minutes than that. Just always double check and see if it's nice and golden and crispy on top. Okay, and now it's been about 45 minutes. And our Spanakopita is nice and crispy and golden on top. So we're going to take it out and let it sit for, uh, for, just let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes. Just have it cool down. And then that way, uh, when you slice through the phyllo, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. And uh, once you've let it sit and you're ready to, to eat, just cut the spanakopita into squares and you can serve with pitas and dips or a lovely Greek salad.